Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner and this is stage four of Dolphin A. Now we've got an exciting stage today. It's a TT, 16 kilometers in length and it's up and down, not crazy hard, but certainly a course that's solid for guys that can TT and have real power on the pedals. I always like the course like this. It could be a little bit steeper for me, but the power on the climbs and then the descents where you can get sections where I could ease my back up and rest the legs for a brief second before I get back on the pedals was fantastic. And then storm up the finishing hill to the line. Now, when we went to bed last night, life was going to be cleared up when we woke up this morning and we finished today's stage, right? Inos, you know, are going to dominate this stage and it's going to be status quo. G. Thomas, Richie Port, this is what those two guys do. It's in their wheelhouse. G. Thomas just got done dominating a month ago at Tour of Romedy. Richie Port was right along his side doing it and we expect to see the same here especially with the Tour de France starting one week after Dauphiné. So, is there some chaos on the stage? Now, when I've turned it on, it looks pretty normal. Jonas Vingard's having a fabulous ride, the Jumbo Visma rider. We know he's good and he's been climbing great last year at Tour of Spain. Now we're seeing him time trial well and I'm thinking, wow, this, this could upset the hierarchy here and really, Jumbo Visma might have control of this race when it's all said and done. But no worries, you got Richie Port back there. He's going good. G. Thomas is set in time splits that are amazing. He's seven seconds up on everybody when he comes through. When Richie Port comes through, he takes the race lead and all is set right in the world. This is exactly the way I went to bed last night thinking this was going to be the scenario of today's stage. Enios dominating. Richie Port has set everything right in my world. But... Eon is a Gary back there who just blazes through and takes the top time. The Astana rider, the climber from Astana, is coming through and taking the lead on today's stage, and he's looking fabulous. They never even showed Eon Izagara on the TV screen. I had to back it up because I was making breakfast, so I said, "Okay, I'll just back the I'll back the tape up and I'll rewatch it and I'll see. Maybe I missed it while I was flipping the bacon over or something like that." So after I saw the finish, I rewatched the last part with all the favorites again. Eon Izagara is never mentioned now. That's not even the surprise of today's stage. It was the surprise at that moment when it happened, but it's Alexei Lusenko, another Astana rider who just dominates across the line, and he's putting time on everybody. Richie Ports, eight, 10 seconds back. Jonas Vingard's time got blown away. Eon Izagari, he beat by seconds. And now, first thing I'm thinking about is, oh man, we got a new sheriff in town. Astana is looking fabulous. Alexei Lusenko is not known for being great in the big, big mountains, but he's also not known for dominating TTs like he did today. So maybe his legs are exceptional, I'm thinking. And if they're not, Eon Izagari legs certainly are. He just got done going podium here at the stage, and he's a climber. So whenever you see a pure climber like Eon Izagari, he's had good time trials in the past, but this was a really good time trial here today. And so when you see that, you know he should have some climbing legs on him. So I'm thinking right then, Astana is the team. But, but, G. Thomas is out there. And he's up seven seconds at the, at the first time check. But he falls apart before the finish and loses time. He will not even place in the top five on today's stage. Now everything is rocked as we go forward. Now this isn't just today. This conversation is so funny because at 10 kilometers to go on today's stage when they have the first check time, everything in life looks normal as we know it as cycling fans. Ineos are going to take the lead. They'll control Dauphiné to the finish. They'll win most likely with G. Thomas. If not, Richie Porte will come through. And all the drama going into the Tour de France is clearly set. We know those two riders are fantastic. They just got done winning Dauphiné, and now we're at the Tour de France. So, of course, they're favorites. Now, with the loss on today's stage from G. Thomas and Richie Port, there's drama all kinds. Can they win here? Certainly at only 24 seconds back with G. Thomas and less than that for Richie Port, they could still win Dauphiné and erase everything I'm talking about here on the stool. But will that happen or will it not? Those are the next questions. When we went to bed, we thought it was going to be clear and crisp when the stage finished today, but it is just bringing up more and more questions. Now, Bora Hansgrohe 
Polstelberger, he does an amazing ride and holds on to the race leader's jersey by one second, but he can't climb. Tomorrow's stage is interesting, 175 kilometers, about 110 miles, but the climbs are short at the finish, but super steep. We're talking 10, 15%. So can the Postelberger, can he hold on to it, the Bora Hansko rider, and keep the yellow jersey? It's a big ask tomorrow, but they are short, powerful climbs, not monstrous climbs like we have two days from now. Behind the Bora Hansgro leader is his teammates. He's got Wilco Kelderman, who had a very solid, fantastic ride even on today's time trial. And then back there, Patrick Conrad, another Bora rider, is in the top 10 on GC2. Ben O'Connor, AG2R, had a solid ride. And in my book right now, he's back there riding really good. If there's any tactics amongst the favorite teams, Yumbo Visma, Astana, and of course Ineos, it could be Ben O'Connor back there sneaking away, getting a stage win, and possibly being in yellow. It's a crazy prediction, but he is riding really good. I've seen him, I've seen his mug many times at the races before here, and he's always looking good. If his forms come up just a little bit more, Ben O'Connor might have himself a fabulous result here at Dauphiné. So, exciting racing still to come. Ineos did not dominate. They can still win here at Dauphiné. Bora Hansgro got a great leader, still holding on to the jersey, but that's not even their climber. They have two more in the top 10 backing him up. That's three total. Astana are looking fabulous with Lusenko sitting only one second back in second, and Ion Izaguirre, their pure climber, sitting there ready to take the leader's jersey and win this Dauphiné if these mountains have any kind of favor on his side. It's going to be exciting races to come. Today was beautiful. I love it when the racing finishes and it's unpredictable. When Alexi Lysenko came through and blazed for an amazing win on today's stage, he just opened up all kinds of conversations. Astana looked fabulous. If Astana was to win here at Dauphiné with Ion Izagari, or let's even say Lysenko can win, how many questions does that bring now when we go to the Tour de France? adding another big favorite team to win at the Tour de France alongside Jumbo Visma, UAT Emirates, Ineos, and now you'd have to throw Astana in the mix if Ion Izagari or Lucinko can really dominate here during this week of racing. Now before I go, I want to talk about Chris Froome because he had a nightmare of a time trial in today's stage. 16 kilometers is not a very long time trial, and Chris Froome will take off from the ramp and get caught from his minute man, Niels Paulette. Niels Paulette will finish a minute down. Chris Froome will finish two minutes at least down. It's a nightmare scenario for the Israel Startup Nation. Former four-time Tour de France winner, Jira winner, Walter winner. Man, we're talking about a legend here, and he is just keeps going bad. The first three stages went bad. Today's time trial, this is what he does. He's a big guy. Powering through these, through these 16 kilometers should have been no problem, and he's just losing more and more time. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind there's no way he'll be ready to take start at the Tour de France. Some people have talked about should he switch and start thinking about stage wins at the Tour de France. He doesn't have the legs to even be in a breakaway and win from the breakaway. Certainly, he won't be capable of riding for GC. In my mind, if Israel Startup Nation have a very solid eighth rider, I don't even think Chris Froome should be at this Tour de France. It's a heartbreak for us fans. We would love to see Chris Froome up there battling it out for another chance at winning a record fifth Tour de France but I just don't see it happening. At this point in time, he's going to have to focus on his health, his recovery, and I think I'd bring him in for bigger for races further down after his form gets better and then bring him to the bigger races. you got to believe Israel Startup Nation have other guys that could take his place that could possibly win stages or help someone like Michael Woods when we start getting, getting into the deep mountains at this year's Tour de France. And I just can't see where Froome will be capable of doing any kind of help for the Israel Startup Nation at this year's Tour de France. Hope you guys like my take on the butterfly effect, and I'll see you guys real soon for Stage 5.